Hello, Mrs. Poole. You can unmute yourself. There, there you are. Hello there. there. Hello there. Well, welcome to you. Um, everyone, this is Robin Poole. She is a city council candidate running for the at-large position here in Midland. Uh, welcome to you. Welcome from the Midland County chapter of the Texas Coalition of Black Democrats. We're Thank very you. excited. We're very excited to have you join us this evening. And uh, let's get started on this interview. Okay, great. Thank you. And I'll just apologize now. This office is really dark. And so I've tried to put lights in here, but I'm sorry that it's probably not the best quality. Oh, you're fine. We can see you just fine. Okay, most great. Importantly, most importantly, we can hear you. So you can hear me. Point. Okay. All right, Mrs. Poole, would you like to give us a, a few minutes and just tell us about yourself and why you're running for city council? Sure. Um, well, I, I don't know if, if y'all are aware, I ran in 2019 for the District 3 seat, and I narrowly lost um, that run by, I think it was 89 votes. And so um, I think since then, my conviction uh, to serve the city has only grown stronger. And I think that um, the at-large position is a position that fits what I would like to do for the city a little bit better. Um, I was born and raised here in Midland. I actually grew up on the south side of town. I don't come from a lot of money and I'm really proud of my story and my testimony. And um, I just genuinely love all of Midland. So I really believe that the at-large position is a unique position in that you can really um, you can really do a lot for the city as a whole. And you can come in as a support for the other council members that really have to focus on their specific districts. And I think uh, viewing it that way and viewing it as a support and, and a a position of communication and facilitator between all of the council members. That's really the direction that I would like to take um, my position if elected. Um, currently, I am a wife and a mother. I have three kids. Uh, my oldest just went to Texas A&M in the fall for his freshman year. And then I have a, um, she's a ninth grader. And then I have a third grader as well. Um, I am a stay-at-home mom, and I serve at my children's school in various capacities. I serve at my church uh, with the grief ministry and also the single mother's ministry. I was a single mom for eight years before my husband and I got married, and so that's a, something that's very dear to me. Um, and then I also serve the city through Agape Counseling Services as a board member, and I am actually um, the female mentor with their new reInvent program that is kicking off at Coleman High School. And so I'm really excited about that. Excellent, excellent. All right, we'll jump right into the uh, prepared questions that, that we sent you. Okay. Uh, the, first, the first question I'd like to ask you, um, we'll start off with this one. Without question, oil is the lifeblood of Midland's economy, but what would you do, what would you do to diversify our economy in the downtimes of the oil industry? Well, I actually think that maybe we have missed the mark in trying to really diversify. I think owning our story of being the oil and gas capital really of the nation is, is what we should be doing. I think Midland has always had that standing and we have weathered countless booms and busts and we always come out on the other side and I think the last couple of downturns people have continued to move here and I think the free market has just dictated diversification in and of itself just due to the growth um, of each bus cycle. Um, I do believe which originally when um, the city went after the spaceport and that project I wasn't a, a really big fan of that, but I see now with what they're bringing into the spaceport, how that's going to really be um, a very different kind of business for us to take part in, and it's going to bring a lot of commerce here, and I'm excited to see um, what, will, what will take off out there, um, but I, I really do believe that 
it's in owning our story and telling the nation about our story of oil and gas and how important we really are to um, just the livelihood of America. I think that we need to stand up and, and just tell the world that. Very good, very good. On my next question, how do you plan to address the aging infrastructure of water and sewer, which in some cases is more than 50 years old here in the well, I think that that starts with priorities. We have to continue to prioritize uh, infrastructure. I believe that the current council and, and the most recent council before this last, uh, last shift and um, shake up uh, in 2019, I think that they have been very much focused on catching up um, and maintaining our infrastructure, uh, I think it was neglected for some time and there was a lot of work to, to be done. And I think that they've done a great job with the road bond, um, getting that in place and, and kicking that off. I know that that's another question on here is the, the road bond itself. Um, but I think that um, setting those priorities and then taking part in public private partnerships like they did with the water tower in Northeast Midland, if we can capitalize off partnerships like that, that's going to be a way that we can alleviate quite a bit of the burden off the city, but also um, get individuals and corporations involved that actually adds an added level of accountability, I believe, because their name is affixed to that. They're going to want to make sure that it's maintained. And then outside of that, I think uh, storm drainage fees are another excellent source of of revenue um, that can be used to maintain the aging infrastructure. Those are funds that will continue to replenish themselves and um, they will always be accessible. I think the council has also designated quite a bit of general fund monies to, to go towards uh, maintenance and just making sure that we stay on top of that as a priority is uh, kind of paramount, I think, in, in our planning. Very good, very good. Uh, my final prepared question for you, um, of course, at this, where we are right now, as far as our fight against COVID-19 is very different than where we were even right. a month ago. Uh, we've seen that numbers are in fact um, on, the, on the decrease, thankfully. But we also know that our city has not reached herd immunity. Um, it's believed that herd immunity is reached when 70% of the population is vaccinated. And I believe right now Midland is somewhere around 50% where we started off last month. At this time last month, we were at 36%. So things are getting better towards that trend, but we're still not where we need to be uh, in order to be completely safe from, uh, uh, from a, another outbreak or even a, a, a different variety a variant of COVID-19. So all of that said, what do you think is the city council's role, if any, in fighting COVID-19? Well, uh, I think first and foremost, the city has a responsibility to maintain um, the basic functions of the city. So sewer, water, roads, trash pickup, all of the services that the city provides to its citizens, we have to make sure that in times of a pandemic or crisis, that we're able to continue to meet those needs of the citizens that live here. Um, on top of that, I believe that the city staff and city workers have to have a safe environment to work in. So providing um, safety measures for the city staff um, is definitely something that needs to be a priority during times of, of a pandemic, um, whether that's providing masks, providing time off to go get vaccinations, um, you know, cleaning services, sanitation, things of that nature. Uh, we just have to stay on top of those. Um, and then outside of that, I think, uh, like I said, communication is, is a big part of, of who I am. And it's something that that this campaign is running on and what I would like to bring to the council. I think that communication um, and connection is key to reach a consensus as a city. I think that sometimes we get bogged down 
in our roles as well. I'm on city council. The hospital is a completely different entity and we're not going to really cross those paths. And I know that the unified command center meetings are somewhat of a function of everybody coming together, but they're very formal. It's, it's, um, they just kind of spit the, the facts out there. And what I would like to see is more communication on, on just a, a personal level of the city council going to the hospital and meeting and talking with hospital officials and really kind of setting the tone and showing the citizens here that it's okay to have conversation. Um, I think that a lot of people are actually more in the middle. I think that we hear about the polarizing sides of things, vaccines, no vaccines, but generally speaking, I think most people I've talked to and when I've met with my own personal uh, healthcare providers, they've relayed to me that most people are in the middle and they just want to have a conversation about things. And I think that's really where we're going to find the answers to how we need to address things as a city. Um, I reached out to Kit Bredemus and, and met with him, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. And I think that we have some, some differing opinions on things, but we were able to have like a really nice conversation and treat each other with respect and just be heard. I think people just want to be heard. Um, and in times of such um, distress, I think that's very important for leadership to to listen to the public, um, but then to also listen to other leaders. Excellent, excellent. I couldn't agree more. Um, we can all do a lot more listening uh, to each other in order to find better solutions to our to the problems that face all of us. Um, next, we'll open up the floor uh, to our executive council. I'll start with Mr. Love. Um, if you, you can unmute yourself and has the next question. I'm sorry, what did you say? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my question is, is uh, Ms. Poole, do you support the ideal that former President Trump won the election and that the current President Biden is not the correct president? Well, that's an interesting question for a local election. Um, no, I believe that President Biden was elected um, and this election was certified and that's, that's, that's what we have to go with. I, I know that there are different, um, I don't know, different audits going on and things of that nature, but I truly, this is just my personal belief. I believe that God, the Bible talks about the fact that God will put leaders in place and Biden is our leader. I think that we should pray for him. We should respect, respect him. And that's really all that we can do. If, if we don't agree with him, that's, that's what we're called to do, I believe. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rad, I'll call on you for the next question. Good evening, Ms. Poole. Uh, let's see. My question is, uh, how have you engaged with African Americans in your life? Um, well, my mother set a really good example for that. Uh, she is a friend to anyone and everyone. Um, like I said, I, I grew up on the South side of town and, um, I just really was never just immersed only in the Caucasian culture. And some of my dearest friends are African-American. Um, Dennis Hodge is a really huge part of my life. He actually helped take care of my mom's property um, later on in her life when, when her health was not good. They had become friends quite some time ago. Um, and so, you know, he's always just been a part of our life and our family. He comes to cookouts at our house and we go to his events. Um, and that's just on a personal level, uh, on a civic level, um, engaging with the single moms ministry within my church. Um, there are people of, of every race in that ministry, um, in the grief ministry, the same kind of thing. It's just people. And, um, 
uh, then the Coleman uh, reInvent program that I am uh, a mentor for, that's a program that I'm really excited about. And, you know, I believe that we can reach across any kind of line that, that we may have with, with other individuals just due to who we are in our stories. And I know going into to, to that mentorship uh, program, um, KC Blackheader, that is the head of that, he said, well, Robin, he said, how, how are you going to relate? Because you look completely different. And I do, but I also, I had a hard life. I had hardship and um, you know, made some really bad choices that by the grace of God, he walked me out of. But like I said, I was a single mom for eight years. I got pregnant my first semester of, of college and, and pulled myself up by the bootstraps and finished college, put myself through college. And I think in sharing our stories like that, we can really connect with people. And so I'm hopeful that that those kids that I get to meet with at Coleman will see that story and that they'll be able to relate to me in the same way that I hope to be able to relate to them. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, great. Thank you, thank Mr. Adler. Well, Ms. Poole, uh, we certainly thank you for your time uh, and thank you for meeting with us. Well, it's thank you. It's been a very enjoyable conversation. Thank um, you. We will end this with, uh, do you have any closing statements, comments for us? Well, I just appreciate you guys putting this together. I think it's very important to have an educated um, voting base here in Midland. And I appreciate y'all doing your part for that. I appreciate you reaching out and asking, asking me to be a part of it and have a platform to share my ideas. And I hope that you would uh, consider voting me uh, voting for me for the at-large position. Very good. Well, Mrs. Poole, again, thank you for your time. We wish you all the best